first we will control the center by how? What will be the first stage of controlling the center? E4 or D4. We don't need to be specific. Speaking in principles is much easier. We will have one or two pawns on the central squares, right? Perfect. Then we will develop the knights, usually first the knights, bishops. We will castle. Why we will castle? Because our pawns in the center went to fight for the central square, so we'll move our king to the side and get it safe. And then we will de continue the developing. Okay, so this is just logical way how to play chess. But then we were touching something else. Developing the pieces in the right way is great, but, but, what is even more important than that? Material. Material. Keeping, keeping a great balance of how many units we have, right? So for that, we mentioned that we want to do, well, practice. If you are a basketball player and you want to improve your free shots, what will you do? Amazing, you know, when I grew up, I think I said it here once, my biggest hero, you know, that shows you how old I am, was Larry Bird in the 80s in the Celtics. And if you read a lot of articles with him, about him, he wasn't the most athletic person in the world, actually quite far from that. But he was one of the hardest working, you know, saying how in high school, and he used to wake up at 5 in the morning, shoot, well, it depends what you do, 500 free throws, and then, you know, starts his days, and became one of the greatest shooters ever in History, and again, not the most athletic person you would imagine, but one of the hardest workers ever. Well, in chess, we need to shoot less free throws, but we will do many, many more puzzles because that's our way of practicing. If we will see the same idea, the same pattern, chess is so much about pattern. We'll see the same pattern 10 times, 100 times, 200 times, 500 times. Well. It becomes so, so easy. So let's start with our puzzles. And there are some absolutely several great books for kids, uh, puzzle books, like some of them by Susan Polgar that I can recommend. Yasser Seravan, that is, well, the lead GM resident in this club, wrote some great books, including a combination and tactical one, tiny bit with less uh, puzzles and examples in them, but excellent ones. And there are many others. If you just go to you know, ask your parents, go to Amazon and just type chess puzzle books. You'll, you will have enough, and most of them are written by uh, excellent authors, so you can see them. So let's start with our puzzles. Before that, which tactical ideas we have to win material by doing puzzles? Like, how can we win material in chess? For example, a fork. Anyone heard about a fork other than the one in the kitchen? Yes, what would a fork be in chess? It is when one piece or one is at two pieces at once. Two pieces or more, right? Yeah. It's at least. Four. Exactly, so just like the shape of a fork, it's attacking, it's touching more than once. So two pieces or more. And what is the idea of a fork? A knight. No, a knight is the one usually doing fork, the other will, we will call them double attack. But what is the idea of a fork? What's the idea of all those tactical puzzles? One idea. What is it? Here, let, let, me, sh let me show you super basic position. OK, white is down tiny bit material. But white has a way to actually equalize the game. Yes? Knight c7. Knight c7. And you're forking which pieces? The king and the rook. The king on e8 and the rook on a8. And by doing so, are you going to win material? How many points are you going to win? Five. Five? Three? Two. Five. Two. Five or two? Five or two. Five or you're going to win five, but you vote no. But you're, you're going to lose. You're going to win two pieces. Two pieces. Thank you. If they do the right move. Yes, but, but, but our assumption in playing chess is always, always should be, I, I want to play the best move, and my opponent is going to play his. Yes, and if he plays less, you're very happy. But if he doesn't, well, you cannot build anything on saying, OK, I'll play this move. My opponent will play a mistake. Um, OK, then don't study chess. Just go and pray, you know, worship, whatever you do. And you know, your opponent will make a mistake. If you want to play the right way, it's exactly what you said. 
I play best move, my opponent play best move, I play best move, my opponent play best move. What is the position? No other way to think. So any other folk in this position? Yes. Knight f6. Knight f6. OK. Exactly, exactly the same idea. Now, let's think about some positions in a tiny, more complex way. That's perfect. So we, will, we can use forks in order to win material. Why is to play in this position? A bit more difficult, but I can tell you that white has a way to win material here. I will let you answer first, but I go, OK, there's another hand. Yes. Bishop takes the knight. Why do you want to take the knight? So that we'll have to press very good. Very, very good. That's what you were going to say? OK, so two times very good. And when the pawn takes the knight, then what? Knight Excellent. So actually, what were you doing by bishop takes knight? You were doing something else. You were, you, your final idea is a fork. Perfect. But before that, you had to, what, what, how would we, a book mention this? Sacrifice. Is this a sacrifice? Why did you sacrifice? You didn't Correct. sacrifice. You, you exchanged, but you did something with this exchange. Double the pawn. Is double the pawn what I care about? No. No. We care about being able to play knight c7. But I had to do, yes? I had to remove a defender, this knight. Yes, you're correct. All, everything that you said is right. Doubling the pawns on any day would be nice. And it's nice here. But it is the least important of why white played that. Why did white play it? Because he want to remove, to remove this defender from this square. For example, let's see another puzzle with exactly the same idea. By the way, it is a much higher level. That was a very good way of thinking. It's already being able to see two moves ahead. Basically, what you tell yourself. You tell yourself, I want to play knight c7, but knight c7 right now is not going to be as efficient because the opponent is going to take it. So I will first eliminate this knight. Then I will play knight c7. This is really what makes a chess player. Sometimes it is one, two moves ahead. Many times it is many, many more moves ahead to be able to calculate the lines for you and your opponent. Let's look at somewhat similar idea. OK, white's to play. Well, you will answer, but wait. I just want to see one or two more hands, and you want. I want to see more hands. OK, many more hands. Yes? Queen d5 check. Queen d5 check. And what is your double attack here? OK, perfect. OK. Well, yeah, actually, you're right. It's going to be checkmate pretty much. Very good. OK, now let's see. Very good. Well, if he doesn't move into the corner. But he has to move to the corner, because he cannot move here. It, it will be checkmate anyway. No, that was very, very, very smart comment. OK, why to play in this position? Actually, let's just, let's just make it tiny bit. Let's just protect. I need to protect one pawn here. If not, it will be tiny, tiny bit trickier. So you will allow me to tiny bit modify this position. OK. I think here we will be very OK. White is to play here. Very similar to the previous position. Just like before, I want to see two more hands, and then one, two more hands, and you will answer first, OK? 
another hand, okay. One more hand. One more hand that is not yours, not the left or the right one. <laughs> that was a great one. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, you can answer. Rook takes knight. Okay. The queen is going to take it, and then? Excellent job. Now, question. How many points of material white won here? Three. Exactly. Exactly. This is a tiny sacrifice, actually. Tiny, but well, just for half a move. Before, we played bishop take knight. We are actually exchanging pieces with the same value. Here, white is saying, oh, you know, take five points just for three. But I'm going to take five points on the next move. So we see that we have the same idea, either a fork or a double attack. But we need to tiny bit, tiny bit work for that. Which other ideas like that? This was fork and double attack. Which other tactical ideas like this do we know, do we have? Any other ideas that, like that that will help us win material? For example, what about a pin? Is a pin something that can help us win material? Yes. Um, I think the disposition not important. We are speaking about other ideas. This position we take. And we are just OK. What about pin? Now let me show you. First question, what is a pin? Uh, uh, something that you keep cornered, like you can't, uh, you have to keep a piece there. And if you don't, you'll lose the greater value of piece. OK, this, this is a normal pin. And there is an absolute pin. What is an absolute pin? Yes? If you move that piece, you're in check. Exactly. So, so, it's, so it's just technically illegal to play the move. Basically. Here, let's just put it without setting the entire board. Let, let's just put this position, OK? Just focus on the right rook and the bishop and the king. Black cannot move this bishop. It's just illegal, right? Because if the bishop moves, black is in check. Now, what about this position? Here, I, I change the king to queen. Can black move the bishop now? Yes. Is it going to be smart? No. But he can. So the previous one was an absolute pin. OK, you cannot do anything. And this one was just a pin. OK, so let's look at how we can win material. Because you know, like I've said, I can see your ages. I can see that you know, you know your part of chess. To win games, to play well in tournaments, winning those, winning material in this way, not blundering, is what you, can, what you should be thinking for many, many many years. Why to play? Why is a great move here to play here? Yes? Bishop to c3. Bishop to c3. What, what is so great about bishop c3? Because it's, it's the rook moves, it's attacking. The rook cannot move. Yeah. So, so, we sh so the rook cannot move. And if the rook cannot move, then what's going to happen on the next move? What would white play on the next move? Check. Just take it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't make pins because, wow, you get 10 pins, you call the tournament director and say, hey, I won. I pinned my opponent 10 times. Doesn't go this way. You create pins. You win material. You win material. You have more units. You have more units. You control the board better. You will win the game. That's the way it goes. Now, even if the rook could have been defended, I put the knight here on specifically. It cannot even defend. But even if it could have been defended, well, white is going to win two points, right? OK, so we created a pin that cannot be defended. Now, we can also use pins in many, many other ways. White has an excellent move to play in this position. Which move should white play? Yes? But the, but the pawn will take your queen. No, the bishop is defending it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, what do you think? Bishop takes pawn. 
Bishop takes pawn, and if the rook will take it? The rook could take back. And then the king can take it? So, let's see. That was excellent what you said. Queen take pawn. And I was asking you what happens if the pawn take it, but you weren't scared, and you told me correctly that this pawn, you know, it's like, annoyingly enough, like those machines that you put a dollar trying to get a drink, and only after you put it, you see out of order sign, right? That's a bit frustrating. So this, this, this pawn is an out of order sign. He cannot move. He spinned. The Actually, he's in check. Black in check, but the pawn cannot move anywhere because <coughs> it will open this diagonal. So this pawn has an invisible out of order, you know? Not functioning sign. That's why you can take the pawn. It's pinned, it's not working. Now, the other continuation is actually not working. Let's do it in our head without moving the pieces. We take a pawn, the rook will take it. The rook will take the rook, the king will take the rook. Basically, we gave a rook and a bishop for a rook and a pawn. And even if we take and take, let's see if someone can tell me this, without moving the pieces. Visualizing is really important. We're going to take black will take and then white is going to play queen take this pawn which black which move black is going to play there no 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 no, no. I, i'm not going to take twice here i'm going to take once bishop take pawn the rook is going to take our bishop then we will play the queen take the pawn on g6 what will black play then yes Mmm, don't like it so much, and so should you not like it. No, that's important, let's see. It's two moves ahead. Not saying it's the easiest, but we should be able to think. The bishop take, again, the rook take, and then our queen will take this. Yes? We lose two pawns. But, but which move black will play? Because black has a problem, his king is in check and his rook is under attack. King f8. King f8? Any other moves? King H8. King H8. That was suggested and I didn't like it. Uh, King H7. Uh, nope. No. Let's see. Okay. This is, uh, this is something that we see a lot. I know that when I'm going to put the position on the board now, you're going to tell me the right answers. But our job, and that's one of the big benefits of chess to young kids, the ability to visualize things, to see how the position, how many things we look without moving them. Before I move it, let's give one last shot. Shoot. Only move that left. Very good. It's only move that left. Take, take, take. We had to see this position in our head. Now I know that you are going to tell me, oh, king of eight is so horrible because queen take f7 checkmate. And king h8 is not pretty because I'm just going to lose the rook. And that's why we're going to play only move. Rook g7. Yes. Oh, but, but, but I, th yeah. I, I, I thought that you said it, but then I specifically emphasized that we just took once. But OK. Oh, no problem. OK. So this is our tiny part about pins. Now we have many other many, many other tactical ideas. And that's why you see that when I, I wasn't joking when I said we need to practice hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of those. And each one, each decent book has 500 puzzles, 1,000 puzzles, and you can get them according to difficulty. And so which other ideas? We did two of the main ones. Fork and double attack, they happen a lot. Pins happen a lot. What else? Cures, perfect, perfect. Okay, you know. What else cues? They're basically somewhat like pin. Usually you put meat, tomatoes, onions in them. It's probably lunch time, but okay, you know, that's why my brain is thinking in that direction. But it's basically, it's, it's actually not like a fork. It has to be either straight or diagonal. Like basically really like a skew that you put all those tasty tasty meats after that will 
Let's try to play. And right there's an excellent, excellent move to play here. So u that sets q's will get first right to answer that. So queen a1, queen a1. see, straight line. The king is going to go somewhere, and then we'll take the queen. Now, skews can also happen on diagonals. For example, let's say this was the position, and we'll make it interesting. OK, why to play? Yes? Queen D1 check. Very good. And we're going to win the queen this way. Right. OK, so we have double attack, fork, pins, skewers. What else? Very good. The skewers comment was excellent. What else? What about what you, yes? Hanging pieces. But hanging pieces, is, they are just pieces that you can capture without using any tactical idea, right? And you are by the hanging pieces, you know, let me be clear. All those ideas, they are secondary to a simple capture. If we can just capture something for free, and I emphasize the word for free, because not every time we capture something, it's free. If we can capture something for free, you don't need this. All those are working hard to be able to capture something for free. What about discover threats or discovered checks? What are they? What will they be? Yes? When you move one piece or pawn out of the way of another piece doing a check or yeah. doing an attack. I couldn't say it better. That's exactly the way. For example, white has a way to use a pin to win the game and even checkmate using a pin. And white has a way to use discovered check to win the queen and win the game. So you can you choose both of them. Yes. You G7. OK, one. Say one, I will let uh, someone else say the other. Bishop take g7. By the way, which one would that be? Will that be the pin or will that be the discovered check? Discovered, yeah. right? Yeah. The queen is potentially attacking the other queen, right? But the bishop is blocking. You found a very smart way to move the bishop with a false way. The queen is not defended. Bishop takes check. Ambush. Sounds scary. Bishop take. Take. We take the queen for free. Excellent. Now, how can we win the game using a pin? Queen. Queen h6. OK. Black will play king g8. Black will play king g8. And then what? And then you take, which, you take the bishop. With the bishop? Why with the bishop? This is a brilliant idea, very good. Before we had seen a pin that white had a bishop on b3, and this pawn was out of order. This pawn could not move. This pawn cannot move. You're very, very, very correct. Very correct. But why with the bishop? What, what, what? It is key. You, you have any, any, anything against checkmating your opponent in one move? No. <laughs> Torturing him? being cruel, evil, just checkmate, right? So that was actually a cool position because we had several, several ideas that were working. Which other ideas? For example, well, let's, let's finish with one last idea. Now, this idea doesn't have much to do with doesn't have much to do with check with material, but actually has way more to do with going after the, the king. Going after the king. Because puzzles can be used a lot, mainly to win material and for checkmates. And of course, for defense purposes always. I just showed you, it's the easiest way usually to see puzzles in order to win the game. But puzzles, or sorry, tactics, can be used, and many puzzles are the same. Why is this to play here? 
What shall we play with white here? We have several captures, we have several possibilities. What shall we play with white? Bishop take b7, okay. We have several possibilities. And what happens if the opponent just capture back? What did we get? Not much. You want to say something? Oh, were you? Same. Bishop take bishop, the queen take. We are not getting too much. Yes? Queen takes rook. And what happens? Didn't you just give your queen for a rook? Checkmate. So, by the way, would that be another type of removing of the defender? Yes. But removing the guard. Removing the guard. But the, the main theme here will be checkmate on the back rank. And for checkmate, you will pay any price, right? Who cares that it is a queen for oh, a rook? Yeah, yeah, that's what we said. Excellent job. And you are using terms. I can see that you are doing puzzles, that you are reading decent books. Because exactly, removal of the guard, checkmate on the back rank, just like our, oh my, basketball hero Larry Bird. You know, the more that you're going to practice, the more that you're going to do those, the easier it's going to be in the game. And like I said, you know, you do three a day, three a day, 20 a week. It adds up to a thousand a year. It will be almost impossible. You will have to work super hard not to get much better if you do constantly 20 puzzles a week. And you can do more. <laughs>